Hello and welcome back to another full Step by Step PC build guide and today I'm going to show you how to build a PC in the brand new Cooler Master Masterbox 520 Mesh. So let's take a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with today. For the motherboard I'm going to be using the ASRock Z690 Phantom Gaming Velocita. For the CPU I'm going to be using Intel's 12th Gen i7, the 12700K. Keeping our CPU cool I've got a 360mm AIO from ASUS, it's the Ryogen 2. Rather than using the plain black fans that come with the AIO I'm going to be using some white Sickle Flow 120 RGB fans from Cooler Master both on the radiator and as case fans. For RAM I've got 38GB of Kingston Fury Beast RGB DDR5 at 5600 mega transfers per second. For storage I'm going with a single Gen 4 NVMe M.2 drive from Team Group. It's their T-Force Cardia A440 Pro in 1TB capacity. Powering the whole build I've got a 750W Platinum fully modular power supply from Cooler Master. It's the XG Plus 750 Platinum. For the graphics card I've got the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3080. And we're going to be mounting the graphics card vertically with Cooler Master's brand new third version of their vertical graphics card holder kit. And the final part for today's build is some white cable extensions from CableMod. Okay, let's get building. I'm going to make a start by preparing the case. As we go, I'll point out the case's main features. So to remove our tempered glass side panel, we've got a thumb screw at the back which we need to remove. The side panel can then be pulled out from the top and then simply lift it up and away. To remove our other side panel, we've got two captive thumb screws at the back which need to be loosened. Then we can slide the panel backwards, tilt it out and lift away. Taking a look at our front I.O., we've got a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C port. We've got a single USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port. We've got a power button. We've got a combined headphone and microphone jack. And then we've got a lighting control button to control the case's built-in ARGB controller. On the top of the case we've got a mesh dust filter which is magnetically attached so it can simply be pulled away. To improve the access to the build the top of the case is removable. It's held on with two screws. With the screws removed the top panel can simply be tilted up and lifted away. At the bottom of the case we've got a tray style dust filter where our power supply is intake and it can simply be pulled out from the back. For the build I'm planning to do we shouldn't need to remove the cases from mesh panel but I'll show you how to do it for completeness. All we need to do is pull the panel off from the bottom. Take a look at the panel we've just removed. You'll notice there's no dust filter behind the mesh layer at the front. With the front panel removed you can see we've got three CF120 RGB fans pre-installed at the front. If you prefer you can fit up to two 140mm fans. Behind our front fans we've got a cutout going down to the bottom of the case. So you are going to be able to fit a 360mm radiator at the front um, as well as another set of fans behind it in the main body of the case. Um, if you prefer you can fit up to a 280mm radiator at the front. On the bracket that we've removed at the top again it's up to 320 or 240 millimeter fans and up to a 360 or 280 millimeter radiator. While at the rear of the case it's up to a 120 millimeter fan or 120 millimeter radiator. In terms of motherboard support it's up to EITX motherboards and if you want to go with a CPU air cooler the maximum height allowed is up to 165 millimeters. At the rear of the case we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot covers and you're not going to have any problem fitting large graphics cards in the case with graphics cards up to 410 millimeters in length being supported. Moving into the case's rear compartment it's good to see that we've got cutouts in all the right places going through to the front of the case and the three main cutouts over to the right hand side of the motherboard have got rubber grommets on them. We've also got plenty of cable tie down points. This is the case's built in ARGB stroke fan hub and the case's three front fans are already plugged into it. We've also got the case's reset button plugged into the hub. So you're going to be able to press the lighting button on the front of the case. There's no reset button on the front but they've gone with a lighting button instead. And that's going to let you cycle through the ARGB effects on the controller. With the three front fans already plugged in we've got two 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connectors that are free that we can add extra devices into and we've got a single 3 pin fan connector and it is important to note that the included case fans have 3 pin connectors rather than 4 pin connectors on them. We've got our case accessory bag down here attached to our case cables. I'll go ahead and remove it and I'll show you what it contains. This is everything that comes in the case accessory bag. So we've got these rails that will go on either side of your 3.5 inch drive allowing you to secure two drives in the hard drive cage. We've got plenty of cable ties. We've got some rubber mounts for securing 2.5 inch drives. 
Um, the screws are going to be really straightforward in this case. There's only one screw that you use. They look like the ones you normally secure power supplies to the case with, but you'll use exactly the same screws to secure your motherboard. We've got these little pegs for securing two and a half inch drives. I'll show you these in a minute. And we've got a standoff insertion and removal tool. Our power supply is going to go down at the bottom and the case supports full-sized ATX power supplies up to 200 millimeters in length. Although if you remove the hard drive cage, you're going to have absolutely loads of room at the bottom for your power supply and associated cables. We don't have any removable brackets for the power supply at the back of the case, so you are going to have to insert your power supply from the side and screw it in at the back. The case has two dedicated 2.5 inch drive mounting locations on the back and securing the 2.5 inch drives is really straightforward. You take these little rubber pads from the case accessory bag and push them into place. Then you take the metal pegs from the case accessory bag and screw them into the holes on the back of your 2.5 inch drives. And then it's really just a simple matter of lining the pegs up with the rubber mounts. And once they're lined up, a little bit of pressure to them and the 2.5 inch drive slots into place. And it is really one of the easiest mounting solutions for 2.5 inch drives. At the bottom of the case, we've got our hard drive cage. It's both movable and removable. So we can loosen the captive thumb screw at the bottom. To move the hard drive cage, we need to pull it forward. And once we've pulled it forward, we can lift it up. We've got two sets of notches here. So we slide it along to the second set of notches at the bottom, then push it backwards. To secure it in this space, all we'd need to do is tighten up the captive thumb screw again. This is obviously going to give you less room for your power supply and associated cables. The other option that we have is to remove it altogether, and that's what I'm going to do because I'm not planning to install any 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drives. So with the thumb screw loosened, all we need to do is slide the cage forward and lift it up and away. So taking a look at the top of the hard drive cage, you'll notice we've got four mounting holes. So you can push the rubber mounts into here, and then you can mount a single 2.5 inch drive on top of the drive cage. And then in the drive cage itself, you can mount two 3.5 inch drives. You would simply fasten one of these rails to either side of your three and a half inch drive and then it's just going to simply slide into place in the drive tray. We're ready to start working the motherboard and we're going to install our CPU, the bracket for our CPU cutter, the RAM and our M.2 SSD before putting the motherboard into the case. First step in installing our CPU is to open the bracket cover. So we push this lever down and out all the way to the top and then we can lift the cover up. We can then insert our CPU into the socket with the text the correct way up, lining the notches at the top and the bottom on the CPU up with the notches on the socket. Once we're happy our CPU is in the right way and correctly in the socket, we can close the lever down. If we put a little bit of pressure here, the black bit of plastic pops off. We'll put that in our motherboard box and we can then close the lever to secure our CPU in place. Next, we're ready to install our M.2 SSD and we're going to install it in the top slot. So we need to remove the heatsink that's held on with two screws. This is our M.2 SSD and we've got two options for installing it. We can put it directly into the motherboard and then use the heatsink we've just removed over the top to keep it nice and cool. Although it does come with a really beefy heatsink. So I'm going to install the heatsink that it comes with just to show you what it looks like. So the first step is to set our drive into the metal back plate so we can slide it all the way down to the back. There we go. Then we take our heatsink and turn it upside down. We've got this heat pad that comes with it, so we can peel the plastic protection off the back and then stick this to the back of the heatsink. And then we're going to have another layer of plastic protection we need to remove from the back. We can then slide our heatsink into place, just pass it in through the notches at the top, and then if we apply a little bit of pressure, it's going to clip down into place. We can then insert our drive into the socket at a slight angle, push it into place and then flatten it down. We can then use one of the M.2 SSD screws from the motherboard box to secure the drive into place. To install our RAM we need to open the clips on the second and fourth slot along from the CPU. We can then line the RAM up with the slot. Once we're happy everything's lined up it's just some firm pressure to the top and the RAM is going to click into place. And then exactly the same thing with our second stick of RAM. Get everything lined up and once we're happy, some firm pressure and the RAM is going to clip into place. Next we need to install the LGA 7200 backplate that comes with our CPU cutter. So it's just a matter of lining the bracket up with the holes on the motherboard and pushing into place. And then we've got one of these standoffs to screw on to each corner. 
We can then set the motherboard into the case, lining it up with the standoffs beneath. We can then secure the motherboard to the case with 9 screws from the accessory bag. Next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. Our HG Audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring it through the cutout. There is a pin missing on the header and also a hole missing on the cable. So we're going to need to plug it in with the HD Audio text facing up the way. Two headers along, we've got one of this case's three ARGB headers. Be careful not to plug into the one next to the HD audio cable. It looks like an ARGB header, but it's not. So we can bring the cable coming from our case's built-in ARGB hub through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. We've got two fan headers down at the bottom of the motherboard, so we can bring the fan cable coming from the built-in hub at the back through, line it up with the header and push into place. Next we've got our front panel connectors and they're going to go into this header down at the bottom right hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring the cables through the cutout. Starting off with the bottom row working from left to right. The first pin is for HDD positive followed by HDD negative so we're going to need to plug the cable in with the text facing down the way. Moving up to the top row and again working from left to right. Pins 1 and 2 are for power LED positive and power LED negative. Into pins 3 and 4 from the left hand side we've got our power switch and then again we can pull all the cables through to the back. Our USB 3.0 cable is going to go into this header here so we'll bring it through the cutout. There's a little notch on the cable and a notch on the header, so we're going to have to line those up the correct way around. And once we have everything's lined up, it's just a little bit of pressure and it will pop into place. The header just below this is for our USB Type-C cable, so we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. Next thing to do is get our power supply installed and our power supply is fully modular but I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables we're going to need. So I've plugged in a 24 pin cable, 2 8 pin EPS cables and 3 PCIe cables. I've also plugged in a SATA cable because we're going to need SATA power for the cases a built in fan hub and also for our AIO. You'll also note I've plugged in some white cable extensions for our 24 pin and also our PCIe cables. I haven't plugged any cable extensions into our 8 pin EPS cables because with our radiator and fans at the top we're not really going to see them and cable management is going to be easier without them. The final thing to say is this power supply is probably not the best choice for this build. It's got a really fancy LCD screen which displays lots of information about the power supply and because our case doesn't have a cutout at the front we're not going to be able to see this screen. So what I will do in the description is recommend the power supply that I would recommend you use for this build. It's going to look exactly the same apart from the LCD screen. So setting it up is going to be exactly the same. If you were using this power supply in another build, there is one additional cable which gives you a USB 2.0 header on the end. This cable simply plugs into here and that connects all the smart features using Cooler Master's Master Plus software. I'm obviously not plugging it in because one, you're not going to be able to see it. And two, the motherboard we're using only has one USB 2.0 header and we're going to need that for our I.O. Just before we get the power supply into the case, this is the power supply's intake fan. So we're going to want to install it facing down the way. So we can turn it around this way and slide the power supply into the case and then all the way to the back. We can then secure the power supply into place using four screws from this accessory bag. Next thing to do is get our power supply cables plugged in. We've got two 8-pin EPS headers at the top left hand side of the motherboard. So we bring our cables through the cutout, line them up with a header and push into place. And then we can pull the excess cable through to the back. Our 24-pin cable is going to go into this header here. So we can bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with a header and push into place. And then you'll notice we've got some cable combs on the cable we can use to help organise the cable. At the back of the case we can take the SATA cable coming from our case's built-in fan hub and plug it into the SATA cable coming from our power supply. We are now ready to start working on the I.O. and the first thing to do is set our fans into place. And more importantly we're going to want the cables coming out towards the back of the case. We're then going to use the included long radiator screws to secure the fans to the radiator. We can then set the top of our case onto the radiator and then we can use the short radiator screws that came with the I.O. to secure it into place. Next we can set the top of the case back on and we'll secure it into place again at the front with the two screws we removed earlier on. I'm then going to pass all the cables on our fans through to the back. 
Just before we install our I.O., I want to point out that the screen is removable and we're going to need to remove it for installation. It's magnetically attached, so all we need to do is pull it off from the front. Next, we can add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. Next, we can lower our I.O. down into place, line it up with the bracket beneath, and then we've got a thumb screw to go on each corner. We can then replace the LCD screen and then just route the two cables coming from it through to the back of the case. So to keep our cables looking nice and tidy, you'll notice I've just routed them in underneath this top right hand corner. They then come out here and run through to the Mac. I'm then going to bring the USB 2.0 cable coming from the LCD screen through the cutout at the bottom of the case. And then I'm going to get it plugged into the USB 2.0 header at the bottom of the motherboard. And then again, pull all the excess cable through to the back. The other cable that comes from our LCD screen, we're going to plug into the hub that comes with our AIO. So into this hub, we're going to plug in our fans. Over on the side, we've got slot stable fans one, two, and three, where we're going to plug the fans on the radiator. So we'll take the PWM connector and plug it into place. On the other side of the hub, we've got some RGB headers. And what we can do is plug the RGB cables coming from our fans directly into these headers and then use Azus's software to control the lighting on the fans. The other option that we have is we can daisy chain them all together and plug them directly into the headers on our built-in case controller. So what I'm actually going to do is plug the cables into the controller. At the bottom of the case we've got a cable that takes an ARGB signal in and I'm going to plug that cable into here so that all the ARGB devices are actually going to be controlled via this hub. So we'll take our ARGB cables and get them plugged in to the hub. So this is the ARGB in port at the bottom. So I'm going to plug the included cable into here. There we go. And then the other end of this cable, I'm going to plug into an ARGB header coming from our controller. So the controller is going to be able to send the ARGB signal to here and then everything that's plugged into here is going to get the same ARGB effect. Now the only additional thing that we need to do is power this hub. So we've got the SATA cable coming from our power supply which we just need to plug into place. There we go and that's our IO setup. Next we can install our rear case fan. So first thing to do is pass the cables coming from the fan through to the back. And then we can slide the fan into position at the back and get it screwed into place with the included screws. So you'll notice that the cables that come with this fan are really quite short. There's no way we're going to be able to route them down to the bottom and plug them into a fan header. There is a fan header beside the fan, but that looks a bit untidy because then you're going to see the white cables running over the motherboard. So we do have an alternative. We could put a long cable extension on, but the simplest thing is our fan hub has one additional fan header labeled four. So I'm just going to plug into there. And in terms of the ARGB, we've got a couple of options as well. We could simply daisy chain it into the other cables because the cable is just too short to reach the included hub. We could use an extension cable, but probably the easiest thing is we've got one spare ARGB header on the hub here. So I'm just going to plug in to it. There we go. So that's all our fans and cables connected up. So this is what we get in the box. We've got the two part bracket here. We've got a Gen 4 riser cable and we've got all the screws we're going to need to secure things. So let's take a closer look at the bracket. On the back of the bracket we've got these two clips so if we push them up to the top it's going to free up the two part bracket. So you're going to need to do this to separate the bracket or to adjust it into a new position. So with the clips released we've got up to 65 millimeters of travel distance on the bracket and when you've got the bracket to the desired position to secure it into place all you're simply going to do is close the clips again and that's going to hold the bracket in its desired position. We've also got a thumb screw on the side so if we loosen up the thumb screw we've also got travel distance this way as well so you can see here we can slide the bracket further in or out of the case and then when we're happy with the position we just secure it with the thumb screw. So we'll slide it back to the default position for now. I'm going to open the clips up again to the top and I want to separate the bracket for installation. So all I need to do is slide this to the end, lift it up 
and away. So starting off with a bit of the bracket that's going to attach to our graphics card, we can slide our riser cable through the bottom and line the other end of the riser cable up with the standoffs at the bottom. And then we're going to use two of the included screws to secure the riser cable to the bracket. Next we can open the clip at the bottom of the riser cable. We can then line our graphics card up with the slot. Once we're happy everything's lined up, with just a bit of firm pressure on the top and the graphics card is going to clip into place. And then we can secure the graphics card into place with two of the included screws. Next we need to remove the bottom six horizontal expansion slot covers from the case. We can then slide the end of the bracket that doesn't have the graphics card attached into position. So I'm just not able to get the bracket in fully straight with the top slot cover in place, so I'm going to remove it and try again. Okay, we'll try that again. And then we can secure the bracket in at the front with two screws. I'm just going to now try and reinstall the top slot cover with the bracket installed. So there we go, it does fit. I'm then going to pass the riser cable up from the bottom. So it's a little bit tight here at the back, so what I'm going to do is loosen the thumb screw and slide the bracket forward, which is going to give me plenty of space to get the riser cable plugged in. And if you have an extra pair of hands, I think it might be quite useful to have somebody holding the GPU to make sure it doesn't fall at this stage. Okay, so once we're happy, we've got the riser cable lined up, we can apply some firm pressure, and it's going to clip into place. Then all we need to do is set our GPU down onto the bracket at the top, and as I've mentioned, you have 65 millimeters of travel to position the GPU in the case where you want it. So I think I'm going to have it all the way towards the back of the case. So I'm going to slide it to here, and then to secure it into place, I'm just going to have to push the clips at the back down again. There we go, so that's our GPU secured into place. So this is the GPU installed right at the front, and here would be a terrible position right up against the tempered glass panel. But as I've mentioned, we've got 30 millimeters of travel on the GPU, so I'm going to push it all the way back into the case. There we go, so that's quite a nice position, and then tighten up the thumb screw. So just take a look at how sturdy the GPU is, it's actually pretty good, and there doesn't really look to be any sag on it, and it looks nice and tidy as well. So take a look at the back of the case, you can see with our GPU all the way towards the motherboard, we're not going to have any problem getting cables plugged in, although if I loosen up the thumb screw and bring the GPU all the way towards the tempered glass panel, you'll notice that actually a lot of our ports are going to be blocked. And that is why Cutter Master do recommend plugging the cables in first before putting the GPU into the case. But because I'm going for it in the position where I have the GPU installed all the way to the back, this isn't going to be an issue for me. I brought our PCIe cables through the bottom rubber grommet, and then going to pass them over our AIO tubes and get them plugged in to the graphics card. Next, I'm just going to organize the cables with the included cable combs. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management so we can get our side panel back on again. So that's the build complete, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think all the components I've used, and with the vertical GPU bracket, it all looks really, really well. You'll notice I've gone ahead and set the PC up, and the reason I've done that is that I've done previous build guides where I've shown the setup using the same components. So you want to know how to set up the same CPU, GPU, and RAM combination, check out my Fractal Focus 2 build guide. 
And if you want to see how to set the I.O. up and see how I've got my logo appearing in the middle, check out my Leon Leo 11 Dynamic Evo build guide. And I'll put links to both those videos in the description. So the PC looks great, but what about the temperatures? So our CPU idled at 30 degrees and reached a maximum of 83 degrees during a 10 minute out of 64 stability test. Our GPU idled at 31 degrees and reached a maximum of 65 degrees during the stability test. Average noise levels were 36 decibels at idle and 48 decibels under load. So I'm very happy with those temperatures. With a 360mm AIO set to exhaust, the temperatures are actually fairly good. And with our GPU, this is kind of where it runs in a case that's got plenty of airflow. So we have no issues at all with this vertical GPU bracket. We've got it set net back nicely in the case where it's well away from the front temper glass panel and we're having no issues at all with throttling. So really pleased with both the looks and also the thermals and noise levels of this case. So what I'm planning to do now is a case review. So you want to find out what I actually thought of this case and the build process, check out that review and you'll find a link to that video in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.